Welcome everyone to What's New in Genesis 2020 R2, presented by David Long. My name is Donna and I will be your host during today's webinar. David is the founder and president of Vitech. For over 25 years, he has focused on helping organizations increase their systems engineering proficiency, particularly in the areas of MBSE and digital engineering. An Encozy Fellow and expert systems engineering professional, David was a 2014-2015 president of Encozy. Before David gets started, I do have a few housekeeping items. We will be answering questions throughout the webinar. You can either send your questions through the question tab on the webinar control panel, or you can raise your hand to ask your question live. If we do not get to your question, we will reach out to you after the webinar. The webinar is being recorded. If you experience connection problems during the live presentation, a recording will be made available within one business day. The recording will be published to Vitek's webinar archive located on our website. At the conclusion of this webinar, a survey will open on your screen. Please take a moment to give us feedback on today's presentation or on what topics you would like to see covered in future webinars. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to David. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thanks Donna and thanks everyone for joining us today. As you can see, we're talking about the latest release from Vitek our latest systems engineering solution, Genesis 2020 R2, released in October, available for download from our website for those who are active on maintenance or subscription users. What we'll talk about today is the new features. So I'm gonna frame this largely in the language of Genesis. If you are not currently a Genesis user, don't worry, I'll give you enough context for everything to make sense. But this was our end of October release, a little bit of a treat for our users, particularly in a year where I think many of us could use some good news, some fresh capabilities. So as we talk about Genesis, the critical context that we're building upon with this 2020 R2, or if you'll forgive me, just R2 release for short, is the solid foundation of how Genesis does diagrams. For us at Vitech, good model-based systems engineering is all about eliciting, managing, analyzing, and communicating the necessary information to engineer system. A lot of that work, the development of that information, the analysis, and the communication is done diagrammatically. And so the fundamental strength of Vitech's products, first is the systems engineering heritage, but from a technology perspective, it's the fact that any view that we deal with is auto-generated and automatically maintained, meaning that any diagram that you're looking at has guaranteed consistency. That frees you to focus on the engineering while the tool focuses on the bookkeeping. That's the common foundation for most of the capabilities in R2. So in this most recent release, we've added a lot of richness to the diagramming framework to further your ability to analyze, to further your ability to communicate. What we'll talk about today are five fundamental areas. The first is simply some enhanced formatting for the diagram content, giving you even greater control over the way this information is conveyed. You have the control, you control the meaning. The second part, is a concept in the language of SysML. It's known as a lighting content or elision. Uh, more generically, it's the ability to hide content from diagrams without changing the engineering meaning. I think you can immediately see the communication and analytical value. Those first two steps are manual. Then we'll start to play with those a little bit and talk about rule-based formatting. In fact, I'll show you. This is easy enough. Even I can do it. And don't worry, you can still ask the hard questions. If you stump me, we've got Donna on the line as well. And then a change in the view framework that allows you to have multiple views per diagram type, per viewpoint, if you wish. And then we'll wrap up with just some additional capabilities. As Donna mentioned, feel free to ask your questions as we go along. This is going to be live in the tool. It's intended to communicate the richness of what the R2 release is. And to the degree that we can, we'll make it a bit of a dialogue. It's certainly not a formal presentation. With that, 
enough with the slideware, let's jump into the Genesis tool itself. So let me stop sharing one screen and I'm going to start sharing another. So at this point, you should be looking at the Genesis interface, nothing new here, but let's start with that first point about enhanced formatting for greater diagram content. As I said earlier, you have the control, you choose the meaning. What I've done here is a simple package diagram because the easiest way to show this is actually just visually. So if I open a package diagram here on a shapes package and expand this out so you can see it, the region in top in gray shows you the types of formatting that you've traditionally had in Genesis. You've been able to control the color profile, you've been able to control the sizing, you can toggle a node to be represented by a graphical icon or a box, fairly traditional things. In the bottom, you start to see the richness that's available now in R2. And if I select one of these and go to the property sheet, we can simply walk through what these options are. The same color control, text line fill, the same opacity, the same sizing, the ability to use an image as opposed to a, a node, that's all still there. But now we've got greater richness. So now you can change the shape of nodes on your diagrams. Set a risk to be an octagon to help highlight it. Uh, set a diamond to represent a decision node. Anything that you want to do, but here you see the nine node shapes that we now support in R2. Again, you have control, you determine the meaning. We've got border weights instead of one thickness of border. You can have thin, regular, or thick. Thick helping to pull the eye to certain regions where you want to emphasize content on your diagram. Border styles, obviously the traditional solid, dotted, and dashed. Per node templates, previously in Genesis, you could set the template, what controls the content of a node or line, you set that globally at the diagram level. So all nodes would have the same template. Now you can change that on a per node basis. If you have a requirement on your diagram and you wanna see its description, select it, use a template with the description on. You can use others that just show the name, the number and the name. Again, you have control. And finally, font formatting. So in addition to the standard font face, you have the ability for any combination of bold, italics, and strike through. Now that is at a node or an object letter level. So you don't select a specific word in a title and bold it or strike through. You select a node or you select a line, bold and strike through. This is foundational, but this is something that we will leverage and it will get a lot more interesting here in about five minutes. But I wanted to lay this out to let you know you do have many more options at your disposal with R2. So with that behind us, the next thing that I wanna talk about is really this concept of, in SysML they call it elision, uh, in regular speak you would talk about hiding. So actually, let me start this out. I'm going to start this out hierarchically. That may be the easiest place for us to start. And so if I look at a classic traceability hierarchy for a requirement, we'll simply grab that. We'll look at that in Genesis. Here's a classic Genesis hierarchy. For those who are familiar, a traceability hierarchy in Genesis will show not only requirements and how they map into behavior and architecture, but it will also show concerns and risks very, very valuable concepts for us who are knowledgeable users, but maybe information that we don't wanna share with the customer when they're reviewing this diagram. What do we do? Well, now in R2, we have the ability to control what's called the presentation mode. So in every diagram ribbon, you have this elision section with a presentation mode. If I look at presentation mode, I see four options, standard, is the view that you're familiar with in Genesis. It has the complete, technically correct engineering content, all of it on that diagram. Let's move beyond that. 
marked. So if I move to marked mode, marked mode gives me an indication of content that is marked as hidden, hence marked. And so let's say that I don't want to show these concerns to my stakeholders. I want to show them a more traditional traceability hierarchy. I can select a node and I can hide it. The moment I hide it, you can see the impact of marked. Marked shows us the content that will be hidden. We can see it here in italics in the slightly different frame. And note that when you hide content, you hide not only that content, but dependent content. In the case of a hierarchy diagram, obviously any nodes in the tree structure that flow from that are going to be hidden. Different diagrams have different rules so that the engineering meaning is still consistent. I'm gonna hide this second concern as well. I could have hidden them both with one command if I wanted to, so this is marked mode. This is where I do a lot of my engineering because I can see all the content, but I can also see what I'm choosing not to show to my audience. Now, when it gets to presentation mode, you have two other options. First, hidden with label. This takes the content that you've asked to elide, to hide, and it disappears from the diagram. The diagram is formatted as if that content was never there. And so behind the scenes, Genesis is still tracking it, but now you don't have to explain to the customer what a concern is. You can help them focus on the requirements traceability. In this hidden with label mode, there is a label in the upper corner that appears if content has been alighted. Sometimes you don't even want that label because you don't want to have that discussion with your customer. So you can toggle all the way down to hidden. And here is, it's not a 100% complete diagram. It's a diagram that I, from a presentation perspective, have manipulated. So I focus the attention of the audience where I want it and I remove content that may distract from the communication or the analytical perspectives. This is manual elision. It's the second major capability in the R2 release. I'll tell you what, this is a great place for me to pause. And Donna, do we have any questions at this point? So far, it's pretty basic, but any questions? Um, not so far. Very good. And as noted earlier, feel free to ask questions anywhere along the way. Now, I honestly didn't expect any questions yet because that's fairly basic, but it's pretty powerful. And again, that's foundational for what's to come next. Now, formatting manually is nice. Rule-based formatting is even better. I'm gonna stick on the tree diagrams for a second here. I'm gonna stick on a hierarchy. We'll get a little more advanced in a moment. But let's say that I want to do something a little special. We know that many notations used in engineering are actually variants of hierarchies. If you work with something called goal structure notation, you'll know that they use parallelograms to represent one concept, circles to represent another, and the iconography of the tree conveys a lot of meaning to the audience. It allows you to take words off the diagram so that people can focus more have more information content, better communication. How can we do that in Genesis? Well, you could go through and manually change shapes, but that sounds like a lot of work. And those who know me know I don't like to do a lot of work. I'm lazy where I can, where I can be. So I'm going to change this. When I grew up, flowcharts for functions always represented the functions as parallelograms. What if I wanna change my functions here to be parallelograms? I can do that with rule-based formatting. So any diagram, I can go to the property sheet and the diagram now has a rule set that runs against the diagram and also influences the formatting. I'm gonna create a new one. And I'm gonna intentionally walk through this so that you can see the, the ease of doing so. First off, I'm gonna give it a quick name just so that it has something functions as parallelograms. Now, when we apply rules in Genesis, we apply them to three different areas, diagram, node, or lines. 
Diagram rules effectively override the properties that you would have set for a given diagram type. So this is the way that you can say the global icon template on this diagram should be name and description. The global shape on this diagram should be oval. Uh, on an EFFBD, this would allow you to change a select node. Instead of being a circle, you could use a diamond. So you can do those kinds of things with diagram rules. Node rules apply to literally the nodes on the diagrams, the nodes that represent entities. On this tree diagram, on this hierarchy, it's going to apply to every one of these rectangles, rounded rectangles. Line rules allow you to write rules that affect lines that represent entities. Think of the various block diagrams, the internal block diagram, physical block diagram, for that matter, state transition diagram. Each of those lines is really an entity that represents a connecting concept. Line rules allow you to effectively format those aspects. Here, I'm just in a tree diagram. I'm gonna write a very simple node rule. And the first thing that I need to do is add a rule to this rule set. I could have as many as I want. I'm just gonna call this format functions. And now each rule has a set of conditions and a set of actions. If I add a condition, I can see I have this set of conditions, always apply it, apply it based on an attribute value. If the type is one thing, I want it to represent one way. If the type is different, represent another. Class, this is what we'll do. If it's a cross project entity, an entity from a related project, format it one way. Diagnostic errors, number of parameters, uh, does it have a target? Is it a, is it a requirement that traces to verification requirement? Or does it have no targets? Or is it related to something specific? So you'll see you have a lot of control over these conditions, but you don't have to be a programmer to set them up. It's just, it's effectively template driven. So I could put more conditions on here and they're anded together, but this is pretty simple. I just want my functions. And what do I want my functions to be? Well, here are the actions, and you'll see all those things earlier that I could set manually, I can now set by a rule. So I want to set the shape of this node to a parallelogram, but I'm going to make another change here as well. Now that I know all parallelograms are functions, I don't need that name on the icon template. So I'm going to change my template to be a little simpler. Just show the number and the name, create it, and it's that simple. With that ease, I've now changed the formatting of this diagram. Again, you control the formatting, you control the meaning. Let's do one more step. I'm going to go in, make this a little more useful from an engineering sense. I'm going to go ahead and edit that existing rule, go back to my node rules, and let's say that we want to make it a little more sophisticated. Now I want to show all my entities that have some form of diagnostic error in red so that I can go in and correct that. I simply add another rule. I'm gonna go di diag in red just for shortness. I can add a condition. This is simply gonna be, does it have diagnostic errors? If so, what do I want it to do? I'm gonna set the fill color to red. And then, so that I have enough contrast, I'm going to set the text color to white. I could save that as a new rule, or I could override the existing. I'm going to override the existing. And it's going to apply this to the diagram. And now, any, any entity that has a diagnostic error is shown in red. I can go ahead. This is still live updates, everything is maintained consistently, and that includes running the rules. So if I dig into a requirement and look at its diagnostic errors to understand what's the problem here, I can see that retain inventory, it's at the leaf level, but it's not verified. Okay, let's go ahead and correct that. Now I'm not gonna define a good verification requirement, I'm just gonna create an association, hit okay and the formatting rule reruns. So what you've seen here is the ability to use 
rule-based formatting, whether it's to change the communication structure, to highlight analytical information. I've shown it here on a hierarchical diagram. We can show it on others later. But let me pause here again and see if we have any questions. Looks like you're explaining it very well, David. No questions yet. All right. Like I said, it's easy enough for me to do. Hopefully, it, uh, therefore, it's easy enough for you. So I'm going to keep going here, and I'm going to show rule-based formatting a little bit more, but I'm going to flip over to more interesting diagrams. Now, first thing, I'm going to flip into the component space for you. Uh, actually, uh, let me stay in the packages here. I've got a package here for generic architecture. And one of my pet peeves has always been actually on the block definition diagram. The block definition diagram uses a real rich icon template that shows you the name, the values, effectively the parameters, operations. It can show you more than that. But a lot of times I have not filled out this information. So I have icon templates that highlight that the information is incomplete. And in fact, it makes the diagram really, really difficult to read. This is another great use of rules because I can go ahead and use, now I'm going to use a predefined rule here for BDD block definition diagram node content. And all this rule checked is if it doesn't have any parameters, hide the values compartment. If the operations field is empty, hide the operations compartment. I think this diagram is a whole lot easier to read than this diagram. You get control. All right, enough with that. Let's get to a little more interesting diagram. Now, I'm going to intentionally open this diagram as a separate window just so that we can see what's going on. Flow internal block. I'm going to collapse my explorer here and I'm going to go side to side. I, I opened a previous explorer just so that we could look at rules side by side. So, this is an internal block diagram, flow internal block diagram out of Genesis classic Genesis diagram, it is 100% technically complete, but sometimes being technically complete makes it hard to read. So here in systems engineering, given the nature of our cyber physical systems, we often focus on data exchanges, but that's not the only kind of interface. I also have structural interfaces. I need to bolt these pieces to a frame. So I've been a good engineer, I've been complete, and I've specified a frame and those frame connections. What if I don't want to see those? Well, I can, in that same elision framework that I showed before, I'm going to take my mode to marked just so we can see the impact. I'm gonna take my frame and elide it, and we'll see that concept of dependent content again. Here in a block diagram, when I hide a node, it also hides the connections. And I can go ahead and change the presentation mode. And there we go. If I needed to see a diagram that really wasn't concerned with the physical structure, the physical connections, it was more about the electrical and the data interchange, I can do that. Elision probably has more utility on the physical block, the internal block diagrams than anywhere else. Okay, let's go back and I'm gonna to toggle this back off. Now, let's get back to some of that rule-based formatting and have a little fun. So this diagram, I can't actually differentiate on this diagram, what are my physical, what are my electrical, what are my data connections? But I can show you a rule that uh, I created earlier for type-based formatting. All of a sudden, this is a whole lot easier to read, particularly if I know the code. So here on the left, I've got the rule list open. It's in the utilities section of the browser, the Project Explorer. And we'll see that I've got node rules. The data ports, so these are the full ports. If it's a full port and the type is data, I'd like the line, I'd like the text to be blue. If it's an electrical port, I'd like the line to be red. I'd like the label to be red. So that's what's controlling these ports. I don't have anything set up on the main component nodes. If I look at the line rules, I've set three. I want my eye to be pulled to these data connections. That's what I'm really concerned about from my engineering perspective. So I've made those 
lines, those links of type data to be thick blue lines. Electrical I've made red, and I've set the template for the name to empty. I just want to know that it has an electrical connection. I don't need to know what it is. And structural, I'll really like those to fade to the background. So I've made those dotted lines again with no label. So that's rule-based formatting applied here. Hopefully I'm unlocking your creativity a little bit. You can write your rules, as you've seen, it's pretty easy, even David to do it, can do it. One more thing. Now, those who have ever seen a stack of blueprints, if you go to a construction site and you look at a stack of blueprints, it's 20 or so sheets, each of them is structured exactly the same way, but you don't look at all of the information on one sheet. It would be incredibly hard to parse what the walls are, what the electrical connections are, what the plumbing connections are. Instead, it's a sheet by sheet view. So you flip open the first sheet and you're probably looking at the structural aspects, the walls. You flip open the next sheet you're seeing perhaps the HVAC, the ventilation, the air control, then you see plumbing, then you see electrical. What could you do in Genesis? Well, we can use that same concept, this time with rule-based elision. So I'm gonna take my presentation mode over to hidden, and here we go, and I'm gonna use rules, and I'm just gonna start. And the first rule is, if it's not structural, I don't want to see it. So here my diagram is, think of it as paging through sheets on a blueprint, just looking at structural, just looking at electrical, just looking at data. So we've got the technical correctness that Genesis has always given you, but now through the combination of elision and specifically rule-based elision, you've got ultimate control you can now understand how you could easily give this diagram to the data subsystem team. You could give the previous electrical diagram to the electrical team, and you've got them focused on the information they need to bring their analysis to the job. I'm gonna pause, take a drink. Donna, anything? Yes, we actually have a couple questions. Um, Jack has asked, is this similar to layers in a CAD drawing? Uh, Jack, I think the analogy holds. So the difference here is you control what those layers mean. Now, the way we've done it on this diagram, I'll jump ahead a little bit. We have extended the schema in Genesis to now type ports and links because it's very important to understand what are my structural connections, what are my fluid connections, et cetera. So the analogy absolutely holds. We have done this layering via type. You could do your layering by another concept. In fact, I'm gonna show another concept in a minute, but spot on, Jack. So another question is from Andre. Can you format an entity based on having a relationship to a specific other object, i.e. color any function that is allocated to a specific component? Uh, the answer is you can, Andre, and let me go ahead and show that right here. So what I've shown so far is layering, as Jack said, much in a CAD layer perspective based on type. What if we had something different? Let me go back to my whole diagram. So here's my whole diagram. Let me take a time-based perspective to this for a second. Let's assume that I've got a phase one and a phase two release of a capability. We certainly recognize that as our systems evolve. Well, what I'm gonna look at, let me first look at it from a data sense, just so you can see it. Sensor C here, if I open this property sheet, I have made it part of, if I scroll down, it's part of the phase two package. By the way, it's part of the phase two package along with its ports and its connectors. I have a rule here called highlight phase two. 
And so what this does is anything on the diagram, any node or line on the diagram that is related to the package, I'll scroll over so you can see it, phase two, I'm gonna highlight in green. So if we do that, I can highlight the phase two capabilities. Now we can see what's coming in the 2B release or coming back to that elision aspect, uh, Andre, I could also hide it. Here's my phase one capability. It has no concept of sensor B. So perfect question. You led me right where I was going, Andre. Thank you for that. You're a great straight person. <laughs> yep. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I'm trying to pick the next one. Um, Paul has asked, with the coloring based on items of a link, what about two item, items being transferred? Okay, great question, Paul. So just to be 100% clear, when I did the coloring there, I was coloring on the link and the port itself, and that's new in R2. So if I look at a property sheet for one of these links, one of these connections, we now see that there's a type attribute, and you'll see approximately seven different things. This is different than the item attribute that you're used to, Paul. So the item attribute is still there. The items would be transferred by the links. Now, since the items on this diagram, close that, I don't have any items being exchanged on this diagram. Because the items are not the lines themselves, they're being carried across the lines, you would not see special formatting for those. Um, you've got to set your rule based on some characteristic of the line itself, its class, its attributes, something that it's related to. That's the way the rule-based formatting works. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to uh, pull out. There is a question about <clears throat> the report will the reports be able to select which rule set to apply to a diagram okay so the answer is not right now that is coming in a future release but let me walk into that for a moment because that leads us to the last capability so there's a way to do it it's just we're going to add more capability to this over time so as we've been looking at this diagram, we're going to clear it back, take it all the way back to root state, standard mode. Okay, great. You may have noticed there is a new region at the start of the diagram ribbon. That is the views ribbon. Historically in Genesis, you have been able to have one view per diagram type for an entity, one view per viewpoint. But sometimes that's not what you want. You want to be able to manage different views for different communication or analysis value. That's what this allows you to do. In R2, 2020 R2, you can have as many views per diagram type per entity as you want. In this case, here's my base view. I've created another view, an Architune. And as I select that, you see I just select from the dropdown, and here it is. You know, now I'm looking at an architectural, sorry, an architectural cartoon using primarily graphics. I've laid it out completely differently. This is a separate view, a separate view description. Now, how do I create these? Well, let me go back for a second. I'm gonna go back to my unnamed. And first off up here, you'll see you've got your view selectors. You've got save for those who are used to the save as a graphic, save as image, that's now under the save. We've got a green check mark that says this is the default view of this type. In other words, when somebody asks for a flow IBD of generic system, this is the view that they'll get, not the Architune. And then we have the ability to associate a name with the diagram view. Let me go to my type-based formatting, and let's say that I wanted to save this as a separately managed view. I could simply come up to the Save dropdown, Save As. I need to give it a name, so I'm going to call it Type-Based. Okay. 
Now, what we'll see is I now see the name of my view right here in the frame. I also see it here. But let's look a little deeper. So, yep, presentation mode, everything is all set. I'm going to open a property sheet here so that you can see how you can manage these things. So on the property sheet for my component generic system, I can, now I have a views tab. So this tells me all of the views that have been stored for this given system. I've got three different flow internal blocks. I've got the unnamed one and I can just double click it to open it. There it is. I've got the Architune. So I can actually look at multiple of these at a time. And now let's show that last critical concept. So as we know, I'll just use the, this diagram right now. As we know, Genesis, a key strength is it auto generates and auto maintains these diagrams. So let's say that I wanna keep engineering. I now want to add a fourth sensor, sensor D. So I'm going to add sensor D to my default view. I could pick any view I want, it doesn't matter. So it should pop up there, there it is. And I can go ahead and connect it, keep my engineering going. And so I'll just go ahead and connect it. I mean, do that default trick, give it a default name, which will name it based on both endpoints. And there it is. So here it is on my diagram, but Genesis continues to manage every other diagram as well. Each one is its own view, its own layout. Here it is with the connection on the Architune. Here it is with the connection on the type based. Now, what happens by default is something like team view or the PowerPoint connector will currently pull the default view. Right here, I see this is currently the default view. It's got the check mark. If I wanted to make my type based view the default view, if I come back, I could toggle that check mark on. This diagram is now what's going to be picked up. In the reporting framework, you can also query by diagram name. So you could ask for the Architune and it would pick up the diagram named Architune and put that particularly in an early section where you've got a, a cartoonish type representation at the high level. As traditional, anything that we can do through Genesis can be done through the API. So if you wanna go through the API, you could get the list of all views and you could query them independently, okay? Let me pause there. I, I gave a lot of information in response to that last question because it led me into the multi-views. Uh, Donna, additional questions? Yes, <clears throat> we do. Um, uh, Mustafa asked, is it possible to show a legend on the diagram? Great question, Mustafa. Right now, we do not have an auto-generated legend. That is also a capability that will be coming. Uh, what you would need to do, to be honest, if you had created a complicated diagram and you wanted that in there, the way I would do that right now is on a diagram, you can add any shape, you can add any image. For communication purposes, I would generate that image outside save it off as a JPEG, a ping, or something like that, and insert it as a legend. So you can do it. It's not auto-generated right now. That's a capability that will come. Okay, Michael is asking a question, which I don't understand, but maybe you will. Does diagramming occur before the system is formed or after in Genesis? Okay, um, so Michael, Diagramming in Genesis happens when you want it to. Now let me try to explain it and hopefully I, it will communicate effectively. So in Genesis, I can either use diagramming after the system is formed as a way to visualize it. In other words, I've done the construction of my system model. I've done my authoring, if you like that language and then I just choose to view that information from any way. Or diagramming is the way you actually do your engineering. As we saw here, 
I engineered via the diagram. So I specified that I had a new part. I dragged and dropped sensor D onto this. So the answer is it's an and answer. Diagramming is essential in Genesis. It's the way we not only visualize the system, requirements, behavior, physical architecture, verification, traceability, et cetera. It's the way we visualize that information, but it's also the way we construct it. Hopefully, Michael, I've gotten the spirit of your question there. Oh, okay, we have one more question from Tim. I'm going to combine a couple of them. He wants to know if there's a way to compare previous views to the latest changes. You know, they're struggling with configuration of model and views. Okay. So, Tim, right now we would do that at a data level. So, we would do comparisons that would help you understand entities that were created or deleted, relationships that were created or deleted. Right now, uh, we don't visualize that on the diagram. So, the direct answer to your question is no. Uh, we would do that kind of analysis at the data layer and produce a report based off that. That's all the questions we have at the moment. Okay. So let me, it's going to get a little boring to flip back to PowerPoint, I know, after we've had fun in an engineering tool. But let me give you a little bit more information. We focused on the diagramming aspects in Genesis 2020 R2. That's certainly the headline, but there's more information here. First off, let me talk a little bit about the schema. Now, those who've worked with Genesis know that if you can move to the latest release of the software without changing versions of your schema. So if you like your project schema the way it is, you're fine, you can go ahead and adopt R2, that's fine. But the baseline schema for a new project, if you select the R2 schema, has some refinements. The most important is we are evolving the way that we handle risk. And the purpose of this is to allow us better management of risk but more than that, better management of the mitigation activities. It's a richer way to handle mitigation efforts. And so now, instead of simply having a risk where the mitigation activity is an attribute, we have a mitigation at activity class that is related to the risk. This allows not only better risk modeling, to use that term, but it sets up for failure modes, effects analysis, hazard analysis, et cetera. For those of you who are interested in those concepts, don't miss Brian Selvey's webinar next week, which gets into an enhanced way, an improved way to do failure modes, effects analysis in Genesis 2020. I've already discussed, we've added typing to links and full ports. In doing so, there's also a new diagnostic and integrity check. You'd like your tool to report when you've tried to plug a fluid connection into an electrical port. That's a design integrity and consistency. And the third primary thing here in the schema is with SysMLV2, there's a new concept called groups coming, specifically requirement groups. These differ from packages and categories in that the group itself has semantic meaning. Specifically, they're talking about requirement groups. We've extended that to verification requirement groups as well. So that concept now appears in our schema. It's accessible in the requirements diagram. And the concept here is essentially, if you have a set of requirements with a shared context, for example, they are perhaps mapped and satisfied by the same part of the architecture, you can simplify that by mapping the requirement group rather than every individual requirement. Above and beyond that, a few more things that are worth highlighting. Uh, in R2, your simulations are gonna run faster, 3.5 times faster to be precise. And let's see, I, I wanna, ah, there's one more thing. So for those who didn't catch it, in 2020, we added the capability to do drag drop from the operating system. Think of drag dropping a file onto an entity in Genesis. In the original 2020 release, that had two options. 
if you drug a file onto an entity, you could effectively say, this is augmentation, this is effectively an attachment. Or if it was a graphical file, it became a shortcut for associating an image, a graphical image for an architect. With R2, we've added a third option. There are several classes that have attributes that are effectively hyperlinks. For example, you can hyperlink from a document out to the Word or PDF document. If you drag drop in R2, and it has one of those, it's called a reference spec attribute, a third option is, hey, use this drag drop operation from the Windows operating system to set my attribute. So with that, I've really hit the full story of what R2 is. To communicate it all on a slide, to me, the real headline is the rule-based formatting for effortless visualization. It's always been complete, correct information. It's your information, your way with enhanced formatting now that hopefully improves and amplifies analysis and communication. Part of that is through the enhanced diagram formatting. Part of it is through the elision framework. The moment we give you that richness, hey, I need to use different views of the same view type, the same viewpoint for different communication purposes. So you can have multiple save views per diagram. I'll be lying if 3.5 times performance improvement is not a highlight, it absolutely is. Now you can dynamically validate at any point very quickly and those schema refinements. So those are the headlines for us. At this point, uh, I've completed all my content. Donna, any final questions? Not really. Um, so thank you, David. Um, that wraps up our Q&A. If you have any more questions, you can always contact David or I um, through our email addresses. Um, thank you so much for attending today's webinar. Please join us next Thursday when Brian Selvey will be presenting Enhanced Failure Modes and Effects Analysis Capabilities in Genesis at 11 a.m. You can sign up through our website. Remember that at the conclusion of this webinar, a survey will open on your screen. Please take a moment to give us feedback on today's presentation or on what topics you would like to see covered in future webinars. Once again, thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.